G'day guys, we've got a probability question for you today. Let's go through it. We've got a random variable x is uniformly distributed over the interval 57 to 67. So the first part of the question is asking us to find the probability density function for the variable x. The second part is we've been asked, so using this probability density function, we've got 10 observations of x were taken. Find the probability that none of these observations exceeded 58. And finally, we've got Another 10 observations were taken. Find the probability that 3 exceeded 58. All right, so we'll come back to that last one. Let's just go from the, tar the top. Sorry. So, x is uniformly distributed over the interval 57 to 67. Now, a uniform distribution, what they mean by that, if you guys aren't already aware, is if we have, let's just say, a, I'll just draw up a quick axis. So here we go, we've got x and y. Now, if we've got a uniform distribution, basically this means that on the domain, let's just call it the bottom one m and the top part of our domain n. On this domain, it means that the probability density function is the same. So for any value across this domain, we have the same probability of it occurring. So there's no, like a normal distribution has like a higher frequency closer to them. The higher the, the closer it is to the median or the mean, the higher the frequency of it occurring. This one, it's uniformly distributed over the entire domain. So what we have here is if we just quickly, this is not gonna match up exactly, but if we, we've got, <laughs> This is our distribution. And hopefully you guys are all well aware that in here, the area is equal to one. Okay, so because of that, for a uniform distribution, you, we can say there is a sort of like a little law we can sort of derive from this little picture here. So we're going to call it, so for a uniform distribution, on domain, now we're going to, we'll just call this, yeah, we've got M to N. we can say that the probability density function PDF is going to be equal to, so, or it can be described by, we'll say the function of the variable is equal to, so we know the area of this rectangle is equal to one, so we, and we know that the, area of a rectangle is equal to its length times its width. So in this case, the area is equal to one. The length of this distribution is n take m, and the width is whatever this value is here. So that's going to be the, what our function is going to be because the function of a uniform, uniform distribution takes the um, the form f of x equals a. So basically this is our a value here. So we'll call that a value our width of this. So we can say that the function, if we're using this logic here, the probability density function is going to be equal to 1 because we'd move this n minus m over to the other side over n take m. And in our case, this is going to mean that our probability density function is equal to, or can be described as, so we'll write f of x, so it's a function, is equal to 
1 divided by, what have we got? 67 subtract 57, which equals 1 on 10. So, what we can say is, so the probability density function for this, after all that, is going to be f of x is equal to 0 0.1. Okay, on to the next part. So what we have is it saying 10 observations of x were taken. Find the probability that none of these observations exceeded 58. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw what this actually means. Like, I find it easier with when I was first starting a bit with these sort of questions to actually, like, have some sort of picture so I could, um, you know, see relate the maths to, I guess you guys would call it a real-world example. So what we have is we've got our uniform distribution from, like, 57 to 67. And what we're being asked, so let's just write the numbers in. Cool. Now, what we're being asked is we're asked, what's the probability that none of these observations exceeded 58? All right, well, to start with, we're going to have to figure out what the probability is that just one of the, um, one of the observations didn't exceed 58. Okay, so what we do is what that means is it's asking for the area of this. So because this is a prob this is a probability function, so whatever the area is between the domain 57 and 58 is going to be the probability that an observation doesn't exceed 58. And hopefully you guys are aware that the if we have a rectangle of height 0 0.1, and length one, the probability that x is less than 58 is going to be equal to 0 0.1. Cool. So to finish this question off, we're only uh, we're asked that the there are 10 observations were taken. So basically, what we're going to do here is because these are all independent events, we can say that the probability of this happening 10 times in a row, like tossing a coin 10 times in a row and landing on hail, and landing on tails is going to be a half times a half times a half times a half times a half. This is going to be 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 10 times. So what we can say is therefore this probability that we're after is going to be equal to 0 0.1 to the power of 10, which is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 10. So ridiculously small probability. All right. Finally, we've got the last question. Another 10 observations were taken. find the probability that 3 exceeded 58. Okay, so this is going to be a, a binomial distribution. The reason for that is, is because we have two different events here. We've got, like, you can call it a win and a loss, or the first event is that x is less than 58, and the other event is that x is greater than 58. Cool. So in this case, the probability that x is less than 58, let's just, we can, I can even drop a table here. So, the probability of x being less than 58, we know is 0 0.1. And the probability of x being greater than 58 then would have to be 1 takes 0 0.1, because the complement, or 0 0.9. Now, 
Now, the number of times we need this event to occur, if x is less than 58, is going to be, I'll find the probability that 3 exceeded 58. All right, well, this is going to be equal to 3. And this one here is going to be equal to 7. Great. Okay, for our binomial distribution, what we're going to have is we're going to have 10. Choose our probability of success. So we've got the probability that 3 exceeded 58. So the probability of success is, ex well, the success one is exceeding 58. So it's going to be 10 choose 3 times the probability of a success, 0 0.9. times the number of times that it happened, three, times by the probability of failure, or just the other event, multiplied or to the power of the number of times that has to occur, seven. Okay. Great. So, if we put this into a calculator, we get eight, point seven four eight times ten to the negative six. Great. So you can see here that like this last one, it might not seem like a binomial distribution. It might not explicitly say that it's a binomial distribution, but because we've got two different things we can have, we can have it being greater than um, 58 or less than 58, it takes on this binomial form. Now the, the difference between this and the question prior is there is no, we could set this up as a binomial, but it's not really that um, important to because there we're not asking for two different events. There are no there is no other event occurring. There are, all of the observations have to be below fifty eight. So in this case, we can just get the probability of it being below fifty eight and take it to the power of ten. Where in this case, we have to uh, have a binomial distribution. Okay. So I hope this question helped. It's you know not that complicated, but there are a few like hiccups that you can go through here, there, and everywhere. So I would recommend you do a few of these problems. Maybe work through this problem with me. If you like the video, as as I say all the time now, give us a thumbs up, please. Um, subscribe to my channel; it really helps. And if you have any problems, make sure you uh, send them to me. I'm always looking for new problems, and um, I really really like helping you guys out. So uh, until next time, lads and ladies, have a good one, and I'll see you again.